When is Batman most interesting? Well, I guess that depends on who you ask. In preparing for my Batman movie tier list, the link will be in the description down below, I needed to find a way to put Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy in that list somewhere because their interpretations of both the Joker and Batman mean so much to me personally. And that's when Sean told me I should watch Batman Mask of the Phantasm and use that as a way to reference those portrayals. So I rewatched it a couple weeks ago for the first time since I was a child and about halfway through I realized, oh, this is my favorite Batman movie ever. And it's not because of really cool action sequences of Batman doing Batman-y things, but it's because the film showed the character of Bruce Wayne in a way that I've always thought would be the most interesting. You see, a lot of people describe Batman the way that they describe him in the Dark Knight trilogy. That Bruce Wayne is just a mask that Batman uses to fit into regular society. That Bruce Wayne died the night that his parents did. And when he puts on the mask and the cowl, well, that's him being himself. And by the way, that's a perfectly fine and really cool way to interpret the character of Batman. But to me, I'm not entirely sure how much exploration of that version of the character you can do. I personally like to think of Batman as a plug. A plug that Bruce Wayne uses to fill the hole that was left inside of him the night that his parents were murdered. Now of course the mission is his primary goal and he wants to make sure that nothing like that ever happens to anyone else again. But when you really think about it, He's a genius billionaire. He could probably make those changes using his finances and his intelligence. But to me, being Batman gives him that sense of purpose and helps fill that hole left by his parents because it's so directly intertwined with their death. But he's not happy while being Batman. It's just the only thing he knows and the only thing he has. He needs it. But what if something or someone could fill that void inside Bruce Wayne while also making him happy. And this is something that Batman Mask of the Phantasm explores beautifully. Bruce meets a woman before officially becoming Batman and falls in love, which of course almost stops him from ever donning the cape and cowl. Who would have guessed that my favorite scene in any Batman movie ever is a scene in which Bruce Wayne is crying in front of his parents' grave, asking them for forgiveness because he's found a way to move on. He's found something beside the mission that fills that void because he doesn't want to spend his life being miserable and only focusing on the mission. He doesn't want to be Batman. We have seen this explored in comics as well, like in Batman Ego, where Bruce has a conversation with the Batman portion of his personality and he ultimately accepts that his destiny is to not be happy but his responsibility is to make sure others are safe enough to have that opportunity. Another expertly done moment in this film that explores that possibility for the character is the first moment that he dons the cape and cowl. It's not a triumphant moment like we see in Man of Steel with Superman's first flight sequence. It's dark and not in the cool way. It's a truly dour and sad moment, and we see that through Alfred's reaction of seeing Batman for the first time. He gasps. But let's take that one step further within the story that Batman Mask of the Phantasm was trying to tell. We of course come to find out that Andrea, his ex-fiancee, is the Phantasm and vengeance has taken over her life. Even more so than Bruce's. And that's saying something. And I say more so for one reason and one reason only. She's chosen to kill her enemies. The one rule that Batman has. The one thing that separates him from the bad guys. But what if that's not the only reason Batman doesn't kill? What if Bruce Wayne's decision not to kill is because he knows that if he crosses that line, there's no going back? And I don't mean to say he's gonna become a criminal madman like the Joker. I mean, what if he crosses that line and Bruce Wayne dies as well? What if there's no more Bruce, only Batman? Only the mission. Only sadness and anger. Never happiness for the rest of his life. Just like Andrea. Andrea being the worst case scenario for what was already 
the worst case scenario. Now let's flash forward and take a look at a more recent portrayal of the character in Batman v Superman. This is something that could have been explored really interestingly. As most of you know, Ben Affleck's Batman spent quite a few moments in Batman v Superman killing people. And I don't just mean like kind of killing or like someone died, but it's not entirely his fault like we see in Batman Begins. I mean, he's killing people with guns, no questions asked. I mean, he's going full Dave Batista. And if we look at that Bruce Wayne, we see that there's literally no joy at all. He's in his 40s, he's still alone, and he's still only focused on the mission. But that's not necessarily the story that they seemed to be exploring in that film. But it could have been really interesting if they did. There's a whole lot of Batman related content coming down the pipeline, and one can only hope that these storytellers are allowed to just do their thing. By the way, that trailer that Matt Reeves dropped for The Batman was incredible. I'm super excited for a psychological thriller starring the detective side of the character that we haven't really seen explored on the big screen yet. And while I'm very pumped for that movie, I do hope they take the opportunity to showcase how truly interesting the character can be. But when is Batman most interesting? Well, I guess that depends on who you ask. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you can do me a favor, leave it a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more Geeks Weekly content. In the comment section down below, let me know what your favorite Batman story is, what your favorite Batman movie is, and what you think makes the character the most interesting. If you'd like to follow me on social media, the links will be in the description, as well as a link to our podcast feed, Geeks Weekly. Give that a subscribe as well. I've been Kyle from Geeks Weekly. Stay safe and stay sweaty, my friends. I'll see you again next time.